<laughs> What's going on, everyone? It's your girl, Don Halfkenny. And of course, sitting here beside me is the man himself, Mr. Tabari TV. What up, Donnie Dawn? How you doing, Tan? I'm super excited about this episode. All right, and y'all, thank you so very much for tuning in to another dope episode of Road to Hollywood. In today's episode, we have a good friend of ours, Mr. Karan Joseph Riley. He is like a brother from another, but not only is he one of the leading men in town, he is a dope actor, but he will fill you up with some inspiration, man. You get off the phone with Karan, it's like you want to take on the world. World, world, <laughs> keep pedaling. Keep pedaling, keep pedaling. <laughs> All right, so everybody buckle in, sit tight, and check out this episode of Road to Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> All right, what's going on, everyone? Thank you again for tuning in to Road to Hollywood. Yeah. And we're back, Tad. How you feeling? We are back. I've been, um, I've been feeling great, man. These episodes of Road to Hollywood have been awesome. We got like some interviews that y'all ain't seen that's in in the bag right mm -hmm. now, and I've been laser focused on like getting these episodes out. So that's what I've been doing. I've just been kind of in work mode. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I but can't wait. I hear it. you've been on the red carpet. Yes, I got a chance to attend the Harriet screening, and if you all hadn't got a chance to uh, see it yet. Make sure you go see it. Make sure you take your kids, educate them. Uh, of course, there's a new, well, a new actress. Her name is Cynthia Erivo. Uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce your last name, but sister kills it, okay? She deserves many awards and definitely deserves an Oscar for her performance. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. All right, Tab, so did you get a chance to listen to it? Listen, listen to what? Y'all, I'm trying to put Tab on Wale, but Wale just doesn't do it for Tab. So I, I, gave, him, I gave him some homework to do. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> You're doing that like That's that. just like the name of his <laughs> okay, so I don't know. Like I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still building with it. What? I, I, I like it's. He got some hit joints on there. He got some hits, but it's just like me and Wale got like a disconnect. And I got some friends that love some Wale. They, like you, you like love some Wale. I got yes. people that they name their pets after Wale. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They, I love you so much. And, and, and it's crazy. So. I, I don't know. I've been building with it. It's a good sounding album. I just feel like the connection is not a musical connection what? with me and him. Speak for yourself, Ted. Okay. Wale, I love you. You have a fan here. Okay. Hey. Yeah, but it, it does sound good, so I'm not going to hate it. And um, definitely, Wale is going to be up number one on my reviews. So I'm going to give it another spin. And I like like four songs on there, but they like real life. Four songs? Uh, Wale has a type of album. You, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Now Tab sing it. No. Wale has a type of album that you can listen to from beginning to end without stopping. It. Why do you one. like Wale? Why do you think you resonate with Wale? I told so much? you he speaks to my spirit, he speaks to my soul. He understands me as a woman. Thank you, Wale. He understands you as a woman. Yes, that's he gets that's it. exactly. Yep. So um, everybody <laughs> sit back. We got Karan coming down here, Karan Joseph coming down here to give us some jewels and some inspiration. And I'm looking forward to this. So sit back on this episode of Road to Hollywood and we'll be back. I can't believe you don't know the Wale. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you don't know the Wale. Lego. <laughs> yeah, but my chair like, like oh, I like that. That's feel good. All right, let's go ahead. Oh gosh, what's going on, everyone? Thank you again for tuning in to Road to Hollywood, and of course we have our special guest here, Mr. Karan Joseph Raleigh. Yeah, man, we got Karan in the house, man. I'm super excited about this episode. I have, I was initially reaching out to you because I wanted to do like a couples in Hollywood, and mm -hmm. I wanted to get you and Terry because mm -hmm. y'all are a dynamic couple in Hollywood. And I was like, man, and then Karan gets on the phone with me, and you know how this brother do, man. He started pouring into you and it's sewing into you and I already felt like we was at the table, man. Right. How do you be so inspirational and jacked up every day? So man? What, positive. Ah, huh, man, I just, um, like I said, my mother, she poured so much life into me growing up as a kid that I have like an overflow of confidence in myself because my mother ensured in me as a little boy that nothing can break you in this world. You are the golden child. And that's been in my spirit, and, I, and that's how I really carry myself. And I feel like when I, when I have people around me, like I was with a friend of mine on her way to rehearsal, and then she mentioned something like, "I don't, I can't do that." I said, "Whoa, I don't even know how to use that word. Like I don't, and this, it's, you know, if I haven't, I haven't learned how to do something. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? More mm -hmm. so than I can't do it. That, that didn't. I don't let my kids say that. I don't let anybody like in my circle mm -hmm. say that. Like when you start, we talking to that. It's like no, no, no tab, no, mm -hmm. no. Well, we don't even do that. Yeah. You know, it's more of those things. Like I, I try to. 
I try to like I be I'm like the linchpin for my most of my friends to be like, look, man, we we gonna make it, guys. Like there's there's no other way. Like my whole mantra to keep pedaling thing is just my whole. <laughs> she my already whole roasted thing. you. Keep pedaling, keep pedaling, keep pedaling, keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. Hashtag keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. That's it. Jack. Before we jump into like you know what's going on in your career now, um, so you you what was going on earlier in, in your life? You mean I see that you were an athlete. You mm -hmm. you played some NFL. Yeah, yeah, I played uh, professional football seven years. Um, retired in 08, started acting in 08. <laughs> um, started working and trying to get get moving on that, and yeah, that was my best part-time job I've ever had. When you start, when you start realizing that you wanted to do the acting thing, first grade. So yeah, I did I did a play. I was Puss in Boots in the first grade, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had a line. One line I had a line. My line was not I said the cat. That was my line, and my mom then went crazy. Like, ah, that's my baby. That was the I was best like, line. I was like, I was like, yo. Did you see my baby do that? Right. Line? I was like, yo, I got to do that my whole life. Like that was the moment I was like, yo, that's what I'm gonna do. Then I shortly after that, I think I saw Star Wars and that, and that just really cemented it. I'm still working on getting a lightsaber right now. No doubt, no doubt. So in 2008, well, so what was your first steps getting into the game? Uh, when I was playing still, I was actually taking acting classes in the off season. I would go out to LA. Um, party and train. Right. Like, that was my off season. Like I'm a party and train. Like I would go out, do class on like Monday nights with Tasha Smith and them, and then I would go to hang out, kick and gig, and boom, 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 and just different uh, coaches. I went through a couple years, and then shoot, when I retired, it was like, all right, it's time to um, it's time to go to the next chapter. So that's like interesting. You, you already tied in everything. That it, it, it's smooth the segues <laughs> because um, when I we met because I was up at Tyler um, Tyler Perry Studios mm -hmm. and I was working on Meet the Browns mm -hmm. and there was an opening and they needed to get somewhere and I swear Tasha was a character on Meet the Browns but she came like to, to the production office every day and she campaigned for you for this role. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, big shots out to Tasha Smith. Yes. And um, she can't pay for your role. And that's when we worked out the first time. And I think you yeah. you, you, you were at EMS or, or Oh, my something. God. Remember how nervous I was, Tad? <laughs> I mean, I know I, I got to say that. He I kept was, coming to me. He kept coming to me like, yo, what I do, what I do. And I was like, hey, man, dog, you Nah, dog. Yeah, and I, and I got to say that to you, Tad, though, even in that moment. That's why one of the probably the scariest moments of my young life at that point. And Tab was always, Tab, you, your energy was so confident and so cool. And you was just like, yo, man, you got this, man. You, you look great, man. Just kill it, dog. And I was like, I right, bet, dog. I'm gonna kill it. And I'm right there later. Hey, it was the worst line in my career. I can't do it that bad to save my life today, but it was terrible. And I, and I always, I sent a shout out to Kim Fields. She was directing the episode, right? Shout out to, to Kim, Kim Fields. Fields because she could have known. This is why, and this is what I tell people all the time. I believe in speaking life into people because if Kim. Tabari, anybody would have been negative and spoke something different to my spirit that day. It was so open and so raw and so um, just open at that time because it was everything was so new and it was just taking in so many things that it could have really derailed me. It could have really taken me back a little further steps than I intended to be. But when you see somebody and you speak like them, like Kim was like, that was brilliant. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but again, Life versus death, you know what I'm saying? Speak yeah. that as opposed to the other one because you never know what, what genes you're going to spark, what kid you're going to save, what what person, is, instead of going to school with an AR-15, is, is go to school and actually need to talk to somebody because you put some some life into them. Yeah, and that, that was a good time for me because, and speaking of Kim Fields, she was like one of the first like executives or directors yep. that would pull me in. Like She pulled me in and we would um, edit her... Uh, her um her shows so mm -hmm. the shows would be you know they have to be like 22 minutes or whatever and we would get like a 40 minute show and I would be the you know the PA that she would sit down because I had um a movie out and she and she would just kind of mentor me through that whole thing and it was like really dope seeing somebody that had like 25 years in the game like she's well, seeing every already. little thing yeah. like you know audio pops and sounds and flubs and, and things that I didn't see and it really helped me down the line so you know the next time we had that I seen you it was very shortly after that might have been like uh, uh, a couple months after that and you were a character on for better or worse yes and that's when ah oh, man you <laughs> killed that one you're like that's when it's so funny I had talked about Dawn the mm -hmm. other t other day um when I see my friends that I I didn't know you were funny right. you know what I'm saying and this like you pulled the comedy it was like you hit all your comedy beats there and that's when I got like I, I saw that you could do this that's yeah. when it and was you, like and that. I think you said that that day too you like I think that day I left set you was like yo 
I see, dog. I, I, you know, I give the people the yeah. stamps. You know, you what did, saying? you did. I, I was I, like, I, I was like, bet, because I remember coming back for better or for worse, because that was like a recurrent. Yeah, that was like a two episode joint or something, if I remember correctly. And uh, I remember I had I had did some work in between that on a couple other things, and uh, maybe I did single ladies in between. So I I kind of started feeling my getting my sea sea legs together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, that, and I remember coming back on that set, and I remember saying to myself like, Wow, okay, this is a different feel this time around. This time Tyler was directing. Yeah. So I was like, God, I, I, I just can't get out the hot box in this place. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God. And you say you want to do this. You right. You say you want to do this, right? Yeah. This, this what you want to do, right? So I'm like, man, I, out the box can't feel Tyler Perry. What in the world, right? But I was like, that's what I'm built for, you know? So I just embrace, I lean into the adversity because I believe it's supposed to be there for certain people because if certain people didn't have adversity, they could really get out of control. I need adversity because if you just let me fly, fly, I mean, I'm. I'm not def- yeah. You you need something to kind of anchor you into yeah. your humbleness or whatever. But, but I don't know about that word. But it, it, it anchors me into it anchors me into being graceful. Okay. All right. All right. Merciful. All right. All right. So like when you 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 at a point where you audition. What's your audition process? Uh man, I get it, and I try to read everything in it first. You know, from everything from the direction of the cast and director to um, what the character is, and if I, if the show is on TV, I try to look at that. Um, get a temperature of the show if I if I haven't already watched it. Um, if it's not a show on TV, I just try to really just really read the lines over and over again until they start to really I kind of can understand what the writer's trying to do and what's happening really in the scene. Um, and then I then I go about <clears throat> getting the dialogue in, and once I you know do that, it's, uh, you know I let it go and. Do you let it go? Absolutely, I let it go as soon as I leave the room. Jared asked me that before too, and he was like, "Oh, do you get?" You and know. I got a good note from Ty, uh, Alpha Tyler. Um, Shout out, out to Alpha, Alpha Tyler. Alpha. I like these. These we have like recurring names, and then yeah, it builds up to the person because, that we have yeah. to grab. Yeah. Like the name keep popping out and yeah. whatever, because we just had a, a dope episode with George Pierre. Mm-hmm. So um, go go so ahead about dope. Alpha. So so Alpha, I did a, I did a read for Alpha one day, and uh, I love Alpha's process because she would. You know, she's about to work very much when you walk into the room. Um, but once you did your read, she was, you know, she'd let her guard down a little bit and give you a little, mm-hmm. little personality. And you, and you and she would share some stuff with you on how you could do better next time or something of that note. Um, again, speaking life to you, you know. Um, and one day, I, my, my, uh, my old thing used to be, as soon as I finished the scene, I would, Psh! thank you, put mm-hmm. it in the trash. And that was symbolic mm-hmm. for my for me to like let it go it's over man mm-hmm. you did what it is it is what it is you know we ain't about to drive you would do that in the room yes <laughs> leave it alone i just did yeah i mean again yeah. again you know that you got to learn the nuances of the, of the business you in you learn the nuances of the world you in i mean i didn't i didn't know any better me I'm, I'm still at that point i'm still an athlete really brash you know what i'm saying i don't have nuances so that was that was almost like a, a, a it was Enzo. A dunk, it's over. <laughs> peace. What it is? Enzo dance. Yeah, you know. Spike the ball. Right, right. Then I'm, I'm, hey, I get to another certain level. I might go back to doing that. It's like yo, like Will Smith level. I'm do audition. If I want to bowl up anything. Well, it's not audition. But I'm saying if he did, okay, I think I would have to right to ball it up a little late. You know what I'm saying? If he did, and I, and if I got the Will Smith level, you know what? I would try to audition sometime. That's what you would do. Yes, I believe you would. I would, I would believe you would call the whole staff in and already had all the bunch of show. I want to show y'all I deserve this role. This is what I deserve. You gotta say when. You gotta speak it. That's thing. exactly when, what I would do. When you I gotta set the tone. If the lead didn't audition, what 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 do we expect from everybody else? And that's the kind of stuff I would do. So you guys are on the show. Yes, Saints oh, and Sinners. Have Saints y'all done any? Together. Have y'all? Yes. And we had a great scene this year too. Like, we did. Yeah, okay. We did. It was really yeah. dope. And um, but so congrats, congrats to you on being on Saints and Sinners, and of course on Ambitions. Mm. So I think that's really dope. Yeah, I didn't you. get killed off in Ambitions yet, so that's, that's just let's just big up Ambitions a little bit more. Ambitions, Ambitions, okay. Ambitions. So what do you? I, I hear you're like you know a special commodity. When they're filming ambitions, like tell yeah, me, yeah like, well, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of um skin. Yeah, a lot of skin. Let's stay skin. It's it's an adult show, kind of. You know, it comes on at ten o'clock on Tuesdays on all. Once in November, they come back off hiatus, name drop. Um, but it's a lot of skin involved. It's an adult world. Um, you know, adults show skin, and uh, being an ex athlete, though, in all seriousness, being an ex athlete for me, man, I, nudity and things of that nature have never really been something that kind of. Oh my God! Cause I used to be in the locker room with reporters would be in there while we was getting dressed. We'd be butt naked. They'd be like, "So <laughs> that pass you dropped? Your whole joint just be swinging like, yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, yeah, 
<laughs> for real. Like half the time we see like the behind them getting taped now and stuff is it, they are probably naked under there. Like they're all standing naked. It's no, crazy. That's what's up, man. Um, you seem to be like a, a, a superstar in December. You know what I'm saying? Every Christmas. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start getting hit up at the Walmart a lot more often now. So what's going on, man? Like, uh, are you are you like Mr. Christmas time? That's like you know what Will Smith used to have we July Fourth. We did the first we did. one. I was just we did the very first. That she was my girlfriend in the first one. Yeah, she, she did yeah, say that was. Yeah, yeah, Charlene. Yeah, he broke up with me. He yeah, yeah. broke up with me for. And then you yeah. got the Cole's character in the second. That's one. right. See. Um, funny. Uh, look at that. Um, so then, yeah, yeah, he used to call myself Mister Marry Me for Christmas, but you know, we supposed to do another Christmas movie. This, this, this. Do you like doing no holiday? Is that like something? That you, uh, you know, or this, this something that just happened. All right, so the, yeah, that, that was you know that was a blessing in Scott. It, it was a huge opportunity that came along where I auditioned for the character, the main character, actually the character that Brad played. Okay. I auditioned for that one first, and then they called me back and said they wanted me to read for the Blair Kirkland role. So okay. I read the Blair Kirkland role, which is my guy on Marry Me for Christmas series, and uh, it was such a good feeling on set with everybody. It was such, mm -hmm. it was such a great feeling movie from the jump when we started working, and uh, we was like, man, this could be a whole little series. And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then like, the next year they got me called for part two. They loved it, part three. Oh, snap. We went all the way to part five, man. Like, part five. I, was, I didn't know y'all was on part five. Y'all, five, man. We out here like, tired to see yeah, we out here like Star Wars. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> so what is next on the horizon for you, man? Um, I'm currently in rehearsal to do a play, open it up November, the first weekend of November in Dallas, Texas. Do you like theater more than you like television and I film? Like, I, like, I, like, I like the training that theater puts on you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up having like 60 pages of dialogue in my head when this thing is done. So... Um, That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. The stretching, the stretching that it does for you as an artist and your instrument. Is, you singing? Nah, I'm dancing though, man. I, I'm doing some dancing, which is outside of my box <laughs> all the way. Yes. You pole dancing or whatever? Well, no, it's not pole dancing. <laughs> to say it's more um <laughs> he says, it's more uh, exotic male dancing to call it that you know um it's the, the play is called confessions of, um, of an exotic dancer and uh it's a ladies have your ones ready right it's a it's a it's a redemption story so i mean it was it's a good story and again like i said it was something i knew i would never do in real life but i've always thought about man what if what if? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> every every girl who's not a stripper had a stripper fantasy. Every guy who's probably not a stripper had a stripper fantasy along with a porno fantasy. Am I lying when I say that? Yep, everybody gets quiet. <laughs> I got to insert birds right there chirping. Choop, 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 choop. <laughs> that, that's or is that just me? No, I mean we we all we all have our adult our adult, <laughs> our stuff, adult man. fantasy. Yo, man, you know, uh you definitely came through for me on probable cause, mm -hmm. man. What day is it? Monday. No, my what day is it? The trustee dinner every first Monday of right, the month. Right, I'm so right. sorry. Right. Why didn't you call and remind me? Oh, so it's now it's my fault. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all other spouses seem to remember. My boss's wife, she remembered. The mayor and his wife, they remembered. Baby, I said I'm sorry. And for the record, I did try to call you. I left several messages on your desk today. And I tried you on your cell phone, but it's going straight to voicemail. You know, I started to worry, but then I uh, turned on the TV and I see my wife at a funeral that I don't even know the people. Well, baby, you know I'm working this case. Well, Ma, I tell you what, you need to start working this marriage. And you know, I, I really appreciate that. And you I know what? Like, I'm not even on, I, on the IMDb of the. So I don't handle cameras. IMDb. I don't even think I'm on the IMDb. Which is crazy. You know I, I just saw that. Who, I, get to that person. Let's get to that person. Who the person to handle the? I probable forgot cause why. IMDb. That, and probable cause popped up on my timeline for something recently. And I went to the thing. I was like, oh, this is. I remember this. Yeah, get you. Everybody. I'm sorry. I'm talking it's to not, that person. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. No, but it was. You know, it was also like I love when. It, the same thing when I reached out to Dawn and, and, and I mm -hmm. see my people on the come ups and we all get together and we blast off. So, you know, we definitely got to get together again on um, and make some more history and make some more magic. Yeah, man, it's in the making, man. King David coming. That's what's up, man. You've been doing some writing. You've been telling me about it, man. So Dawn had a great idea. And I think that, you know, since you being Mr. Inspirational, we are starting to end these shows oh, we with an inspirational Inspirational quote. So we putting you right on the spot. We're gonna talk, you guys, they both taking deep drinks of water. 
I'm sorry, I was late. Karan, you can take us out with an inspirational thought. Uh, let's say this. Um, anything positive is better than everything negative. And there you have it. Thank you for tuning in to Roll to Hollywood. Peace, 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 peace. How's that? I just read that today. I got inspirational quotes every day on my phone. <laughs>